So here's our second lesson on 4.7. Um, here's our day two. We are still going to complete the square. Um, now that you guys know how to complete the square, this will seem very familiar. Um, but how does it work when your a value is not equal to 1 out front if they throw different numbers at you? So I'm going to go through just a couple examples. Again, it's going to seem very familiar. Um, but on this example, this a value is a 2, which means we just have to do a couple extra things. But the good news is both, both ways, it doesn't matter what your a value is, start by putting in those two spaces. So complete the square... A lot of times you say, oh, that's that two space thing. And that's going to be true regardless of what your A value is. So put in your two spaces. We want that 35 off on the end because we don't want to think about it um, until the very end. We don't touch that number. So we have something in front of our x squared. We've got this 2. And we actually we don't want it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor that 2 out of just these first two terms right here. We'd like this to look like what we did yesterday with just an x squared term. So let's factor the 2 out, and that will leave you with an x squared minus 8x. Again, we totally ignore this 35 off on the end. Don't factor anything out of it. That's why we put in the two spaces to get it away from us from the very beginning. Um, we'll still have our spaces. There's that plus 35. And here's where that other parenthesis is going to go. We are going to create a perfect square trinomial in here, something that we can factor. So, so far the only thing new that we've had to do was factor out this 2 um, before we start the rest of it. And, you know, our next step is going to say take your b value and divide by 2. Well, our b value is now a negative 8 because we factored the 2 out. So we have a negative 4 squared. Oh, we square it. That's what goes up here. And that gives you a positive 16. So, so far, that b over 2 and squaring it has been exactly the same. Now, here's the second new idea. It's how do we counterbalance this spot over here? It's going to be really tempting just to put in a minus 16 because we see we put a 16 in, so we should subtract 16. Here's what we have to remember, though. This 16 is inside this parentheses that has this 2 sitting out front, which means mathematically this 2 would get distributed in to all these terms, and so you would really have a 2 times 16, which is 32. So even though we wrote in plus 16, really we put in a value of 2 times 16, which is 32, and so we counterbalance with a negative 32. So the counterbalancing piece is going to seem different if you had to factor something out right there. All right, the next part, same. We're just going to rewrite this. Um, we're going to say that 2 stays out front, and then this is factorable. We made this factorable on purpose. So factors of 16 that add up to negative 8, well, that's a negative 4 and a negative 4. But we can just write it once, x minus 4 squared. And now, just combine your like terms on the end. Negative 32 plus 35 is a positive 3. And now we have vertex form, just with an a value out front, which just um, changes your pattern of change with that out there. But this vertex would be positive 4, positive 3, pattern of change, 2, 6, 10. All right, so this completing the square, again, it's just getting the pattern down of what you do. Uh, I'm going to go through just one more example in this intro video, and then you'll have some examples from the other videos. Um, this time, though, we are going to be asked to complete the square and then solve for x. So start, you're completing the square by putting in your two spaces every single time. So we have 2x squared. 2x squared minus a 4x space space minus 14. I'll deal with that equals 0 in a minute. And then we say, oh, there's something in front of our x squared. We have to factor that out. So factor the 2 out of only the first two terms, and that leaves you with an x squared minus 2x minus 14. And that other parenthesis goes after that first space because we want to create something that we can factor right here. 
So now you do your b over 2. So take your b value, cut it in half. Negative 2 over 2 is a negative 1. We square it, and that's what goes up here, plus 1. Now remember, it's the counterbalancing that's going to work a little bit differently. We put a 1 in here, but really we put in a value of 2 times 1. So we have to counterbalance that 2 times 1 with a negative 2. All right, so this, let me just do this a little. That 2 is going to be out front. Um, this is factorable. Factors of 1 that add up to a negative 2. It's going to be this negative 1 and negative 1, but we can write it just once. x minus 1 squared. And then this negative 2 minus 14 is a negative 16. So minus 16 equals 0. So we have completed the square. That piece is done. Now it's in vertex form. And vertex form is really easy to solve from. Um, we just undo everything and we end up solving using square roots. So we will start by adding 16 to both sides. So all of this is kind of review right here that we're doing. We just had to complete the square first. Divide both sides by 2. So we have x minus 1 squared equals 8. Now to undo the square, we square root both sides. That leaves you with an x minus 1. Then remember to bring in your plus or minus, square root of 8. We'll do with the square root of 8 in a minute. And then add 1 to both sides. So we have x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 8. Now let's think about that square root of 8 off on the side. Can we break that down? Well, yeah, with a 4 and a 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 2. So really, we have a 1, and then your plus or minus, instead of the square root of 8, we'll write 2 square root 2. And there's our final answer.